This is Boxing Tickets NI in association with SB Sports in Chaco. We're delighted to be joined once again with the main man, Tommy Mark. How are you, Tommy? All good. Thanks for having me, Stephen. It's, it's a pleasure. I was sort of saying that, you know, the last time we spoke, just over two months ago down in Peach Gym in, in Dublin, you had no fight. Um, and obviously at that stage, you were sort of saying, don't need a warm up, just get me in there. And then I don't know whether it was just the, the luck of the draw. Maybe it was sudden in the interview, someone seen something and thought, let's make the fight. What sort of, did, at that stage when we spoke, was that sort of in the talks of the, of the rematch with Chris Bollum Smith? No, there was, there was no, um, there was no sign of it really, to be honest, because I think at that time when we spoke, uh, Fabio Turchi was the, was the mandatory for the European. So that's the way it looked. It looked like they were going to be boxing and I was just training, hoping to, you know, get a, a last minute opportunity of some sort. Somebody mm -hmm. pulled out with an injury, someone got COVID, you know, so I was just staying ready for, you know, something to come out of blue. And, and obviously, the same was announced, I think, at the start of March then, and obviously the rematch was, was happening. Um, probably nobody more delighted than yourself because, you know, you're you're nearly eight years now as a pro. The last thing you want to be doing is having a warm-up to then fight, you know, for the belt again. Um, you know, obviously, I'm sure you're, you're delighted then that obviously the fight could be done. Yeah, you know, it just came out of, out of, out of left field. You know, the, I was... Thought, like I just said there, I thought it was going to be Fabio versus Chris. That looked like it was all nailed on. And, and I seen an interview Chris had done saying he, that was his fight that he was having next. And then next thing I was on Twitter and I seen Richard Reagport fighting Fabio Turchi, uh, Tablet Bill and Wembley. I said, Jeez, what's going on there? And then, like the next day, I got a phone call, right? The, the ring rats is on. So, sorry. Do you want it? Are you ready for it? I was like, fuck, right am I? Let's get. Let's get it on. I guess you sort of have to they sort of give a, a backhanded gesture to the boxer then for sort of making that fight. It sort of has got you the rematch that you wanted. No, well, it's just the way things happen. Like they they didn't do that to me like as a favor or anything. And I think uh maybe Fabio, maybe they were offering him more money for the rag poor fight than in I think he got COVID and he had to pull it. But you know, I, I'm a I'm a believer in in God, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever way God is to anyone, there is you know the the higher power. So I have to take care of everything. I need to take care of my end, training, living a life, doing everything that a professional champion needs to do. So I just got what I was putting it and I wanted the rematch that's the fight that I wanted I kept on saying it to anyone who would listen and um, I just took care of the stuff I needed to take care of in order to get the rematch I was thinking if anything comes up last minute I'll be ready and then next thing I don't know where the rematch comes up and I'll say it's, it's something that you've always wondered like if it's you know it, like when you think back that last year it was in, it was in Eddie's back garden and you know probably no more than a couple of hundred fans, whereas now the rematch has been done in the Manchester Arena and there's going to be quite a lot of fans there. You're going to have fa fa more fans there to obviously support you than anything else. Will that play a factor in the fight that, that obviously people shouting your name and, and people going booked aft as they always do at boxing will sort of give you a wee bit of, you know, they say sometimes they can add an extra 10%? Um, you know, hopefully it does. If any, if it has any effect, I want it to be positive, but my main thing is just try and stay focused and just, you know, keep my mind on the job, on what's going on inside the ring. You know, people going buck the aft or outside, that's up to him. You know, I need to stay concentrated and stay focused on on my job. And then you can go buck the aft afterwards when you have the belt in your hands. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, obviously, the last team you fought it was for Commonwealth um, European and British. Um, obviously, Chris Bone Smith vacated the British title. Um, I think at that stage they were looking at him fighting Demon Juma. Um, obviously, he's then vacated the boat. Do you sort of see that maybe as a as a sign of weakness on Chris's team? They they vacate the boat rather than they take a fight. 
I don't know. Uh, it could more. You don't know what's going on with them. Like it could have been that like, they might take the risk, or it could have been smart business. But uh, the if you're European, well, the, what I have believe, if you have the European belt, you know the British is back the way. Mm-hmm. So you know it's it doesn't really affect his position. You know like where he was because he, he has the European title but maybe maybe he just didn't fancy it because you know Juma is a good operator had a hard fight there with React Core the other week but you know maybe he didn't fancy it it would have probably the British title still been on the line for you would obviously have given you the, the history of being the first Irish boxer to have the cruiserweight belt um, you know obviously I think that's something we talked about last year as well um, but at the end of the day the most important boat there is the European boat, which is probably still arguably still one of the best boats in boxing. You know, it'll get you back. They sort of, it, it erases sort of the defeat and obviously gets you back and where you want to be, obviously pushing on the world titles. So as long as that boat's in the line, that's all that matters. 100%, you know, the, that belt puts you back right in pole position for a world title. So um, you see the position has put Chris in. Um, I don't know why Chris didn't kick on and go challenge for one of the titles because he's highly ranked with all of the governor bodies, but suits me that he's given me an R shot. So I said, you know, this is a, like you say, it's one of the major belts. It's the, the most prestigious belt before winning a world title. All the other belts, they're all, it's great to win any kind of belt, but to win a genuine European title, you know, it's it's a special feeling. So to do it twice, I have to go down as a legend. Go on. You definitely would have to go down as a legend. And I know T- Tyrone McKenna will obviously be watching and going, he's a legend, you know. He's, all, he's always played this sort of Jackal and Hyde sort of approach where he's blog each other on, on social media and things. And I find it comical, but he's, he's playing really good. He's are, he's, the two are definitely destined for some sort of movie after boxing. Uh, well, he was already in the movies, and uh, I think he's he's finished with the movie, so it's mad at him now. He's had his his moment in Hollywood, and he messed it up, and um, now it's my turn to like Tyrone. He's one of them child stars who uh, once I got a taste of it, they just had to drink. He was only thirteen, and he was drinking like a maniac in Hollywood, so. Well, he greyhound really? dog, wasn't it? Wasn't it a greyhound dog he had I, to follow? I, him and the dog, there was some... He actually kept that dog. Did he? The lamb kept it, and then he um, was out walking it, they let it off a leaf, and it ran away, and he, he never seen it again. <laughs> never, even, <laughs> never even knew that. <laughs> so I didn't, I'm surprised he didn't have it away at the race this summer. You know, Tyrone always liked to dabble his hand summer. Aye, right. he's a dabbler, all right. And he's obviously started his first podcast today, which starts next week as well. I'm sure he'll have you on as a guest soon, Rip. Him and uh, I didn't even go on. I heard of <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, obviously, come back to obviously your fight, Chris Bell and Smith. Um, I know we'd spoke to you. What well, must have been about two weeks, maybe afterwards. Obviously, the Fela, um, final press. Well, I think it was a final press conference of the Fela. Um, and sort of at that stage, I think you were sort of saying that. You know, the, the fight wasn't a robbery and things like that. A lot of people thought it was a robbery. What was your thoughts? Just that you just lost out just in a close decision? Yeah, it's, you know, it was a close fight and I thought I won it, but it was it was just a close, close fight. So there's no point that like, you can cry about getting robbed till the crowds come home. It's not mm-hmm. going to change anything. So that's why, you know, I'm not... Um, the well and all the it was a close fight. Followed on enough to, to get the decision and didn't, but uh, I'm ready to move on and, and get the win this and time. Does that sort of urge you on more, knowing that obviously, you know, when you watch it back and things like that, and you see maybe we things that you've done wrong, I'd, I would probably say, in my opinion, you probably hurt him with the right hand early on in the fight, probably scuppered your game plan, sort of. You probably didn't think you maybe might hurt him so early, and then it probably maybe. Got you sort of double guessing what you were doing and sort of trying to load up with a one punch rather than 
stick to what you sort of planned? Yeah, there's just, I've made so many we really silly mistakes that, to be honest, I shouldn't be making because I have, so, I have like, a wealth of experience. So um, I only got to fight back once and it was just, I felt like smashing, I watched it on my phone, I felt like smashing my phone off the wall and, because I've done so many foolish things. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I've just put that behind me and Akuna Matala. Akuna Matala. I can, I can never say them words right. Um, obviously, I think Pete had done like a Q&A sort of thing on Instagram last week and, and he was obviously of the belief as well that, that you'd lost the fight rather than him winning it. And obviously nothing really much needed to change in this camp, I guess. The secrets are never going to come out on what you're working on in the fight. Because the last thing he wants is getting in the Chris Bellum's miss hands and, and knowing what you're preparing for. But I guess it's pretty much you box to the best of your ability. You know, that's all you need to worry about. That's it. You know, the, the fight, the last fight, it all comes down to, let's say all boxing fights are all, all comes down to what the judges like. So boxing is so, you know, it's all about your opinion and, and um, it's so subjective. So at the end of the day, when a fight's that close, it all comes down to what the officials like better. Do they like the single shots? Do they like the punches and bounces? Do they like that style and this and the other? So if you win clear cut, then it takes all the subjectiveness away. Mm-hmm. So um, this, this time around, I just want to make sure that I win every round, you know, clear, and it's not subjective at all. And I know it's, Tyrone, it's easier said than done, but that does what that's what my plan is. Tyrone had obviously something similar to the Harold Davis fight, and the fact that obviously he was boxing in the in the back foot and, and winning it, whereas the judges seem to be more like in the the opposite effect. Um, it's as well being the way fighters as well, like being you know an Irish fighter going to fight in England. You know, the, the history between Ireland and England in sports and in, in life, like, but in particular sports, it's such a deep history, you know, like of a strong rivalry. So um, you're up against it, kind of, when you're over there fighting a home fighter. So you really do have to do a number on them. And, you know, the last time when I boxed Chris, there was three English judges in England and I'm friend an English one. So I didn't even realize that until I got in the ring, but it just you you cannot leave it, like I said, up the um interpretation. It has to be listen, he's won that, he's dominated, he's a battle boxer, he's done the battle punches. So that's all that's all all foreign fighters going to any country have to do. Because when, when you're changed? at home and you're in the home corner, you, you get a wee bit more, you know, leeway. Is anything changing in terms of judging for this fight or will it still be three British judges? No, um, I think it's three um, neutral judges. Three neutral judges um, because it's European title and so it's three European judges. The last time, because the British title was in a the mix, they were able to squeeze them and in. Mm. So obviously it's, it's it's playing a good factor there as well. Um, I know when you when he's initially fought, there was no rematch clause on it. Has there been a rematch clause put on this side for Chris's side, or is it just winner takes all and, and moves on? And that's the end of it. That's it. I'm gonna win and then push on towards the world title. So no need for a rematch. Definitely, there's obviously sometimes like, you know when they, when you have a rematch, you know a trilogy fight can never be the same and things. Like the first fight was a great fight. Um, obviously, we get we get the same fight again, but a, a different decision. You know that's what everybody wants. You know they want good fights, and and obviously they come out victorious. Um, obviously, Carl Frampton was obviously your your water boy um, for the last time in fight camp, um, and obviously a lot was probably put on 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 Carl with the McGuigans, and it was more the they annoy them on their side, but obviously he was there to, to pass on um, his experience and everything else. Is, is he going to be involved with your team in this in this side? I believe he's been giving you a lot of advice in, in the lead up to the fight. Yeah, well, 
I had to drop him because he was um he was a scud for the last time, so I had to take take him um off the team. And uh I'm not be talking to him anymore to be honest. So 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 Frampton's dropped from the team then he's 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 been demoted from Waterboy. Uh, he's he just I actually think he was secretly working with the McGuigans and uh he gave the judges a wee bit we backhander so that they could get Chris Bill and Smith to the season. So Frampton's out of here. So, so you know so it'd be one then you're going to be calling Frampton out and getting them out of retirement and selling it in the ring. It'd be too heavy for me now, like, but if he could get down the cruiser with 100%. <laughs> um, obviously, with this fight, you know, probably don't like you sort of talking it in sort of like a positive or negative sort of way, but do you feel like sort of, I know when Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn obviously said, if you and James had both won last year, match would come back to Belfast. Do you obviously see this as sort of make or break fight with Matchroom obviously coming back to Belfast or is it just obviously focus on get the win and never worry about anything else? I just get the win. Like it's not, not my business what Matchroom want to do or what the dog want to do. You know what I mean? If you want to come to Belfast, they'll come. Um, if they don't, they won't. You know what I mean? So as long as I win, Obviously, it's a dream for everyone to fight in their hometown. And uh, I would love to fight in a massive fight in the Odyssey Arena. But if I never fought in the Odyssey again, it doesn't matter as long as I, you know, become a world champion. That's all that matters to me. I so know. I think the last time you fought, you fought down the card and... Was it Burnett Haskins or Sani Arkoff? You fought just before yeah, the TV card started? Burnett, fought in Burnett's card, fought in Frampton's card. Um, so you've obviously had plenty of experience, and I guess coming back, it's headlining in the SSE, you know, potentially, obviously, you could be fighting, you know, who knows, the end of this year, you could it be... Big, listen, it would be unbelievable. Like, uh, the goal be fighting for a world title, become world champion in the town. It would be so great, especially... The, the SSE, you know, at the whole special place in, you know, my generation's heart, because that's when we were just turned 18, the, the Odyssey Arena, I'm sure Steve knew were down there, all the mm-hmm. nightclubs just opening that door where you, you know, your first experience of socializing and all all that fun stuff. So it would mean, it would be great if it, if it did happen. But like I said, um, there's been plenty of opportunities to come here and it, it hasn't happened yet so just have to wait and see Obviously I want to sort of touch on, on one of your, your old um, obviously club mates and everything else um, Anthony Kokachi obviously been announced as a co-main um, for Fury White um, you know sort of I interviewed him on Wednesday um, and I think even at that stage, you've sort of said like a couple of years ago, he was finished with boxing. Like you've said it before, everybody else has said it. How freakish talent Anto has, but can they walk out of Wembley in front of ninety four thousand? Have you been asking? Does he need a water boy for his camp? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like Anthony Kikachi has been um, very, you know, inactive and overlooked. You know, from a turn professional. But anybody who knows him knows how good he is. Even Frampton's went on record to say he's the hardest puncher he's been in the ring with. He's so good. And, you know, the I was just said it yesterday, actually. For our boxing club, Alvaro Plunkett, we had Tyrone McKenna in a co-main event fighting a, a massive fight in Dubai on Eurosport. Mm-hmm. Then next week we'll have me fighting in the Colmian event for European title again on the zone. And then a couple of weeks later, we'll have Annie Kikati fighting in a Colmian event against the former world champion on BT Sport. So that's three Colmian events on three different platforms in the space of a month. Space of a month and, and off in the same gym. 
And it's just a credit to the gym, like the credit to Albert Pumper. The, the three of us all came up together through the ranks. Kikachi was always, you know, the the best out of us. And he was the first one to win the Aries title. And he was kind of the one who we looked looked to, you know, like the, that's how good we want to be. So I'm glad to see he's finally got the opportunity. And it's a wee bit late, later than expected, but better late than never. And he wins this fight. Next thing, he's on a world scene, and I've I've said it, and I'm sick saying it. He will be world champion, no doubt, my man. I firmly believe that as well. It's just get, getting the right opportunity, at the right time. And as as you say, you know, when you believe that things happen in life for reasons and, and everything else, if you keep putting the hard work in, it's going to happen. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um, it's obviously, I know that probably Mark does more of the, the contract side of things now for you, but it's, it's sort of Eddie, Eddie sort of mentioned anything of what could potentially be next when, when you won the, the European belt next week? Yeah, it was, we had a, we have a, a deal in place and everything's, everything's nice, but it all, I have to win, you know, for all the keep rolling, so but Mark Mark's brilliant manager, Mark got everything sorted. So the future's looking good. I think you're what, what Mark now about three and a, three and a half years. October 2018, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. Um the years are rolling back, aren't they? Come on. It's crazy. You know, funny, I was doing an interview earlier today with uh Green McCormick down south, and he turns 35 next week, and I turn 40 in, in less than a month, and you know. I guess the pandemic sort of the last two years lost their focus on age and everything else. And whereas now for you as boxers, it's trying to get back in that mindset of I'm actually a professional boxer, I need to go out and fight. Yeah. Well, for me and um and Tyrone as well, can speak on Tyrone because we trained together. The pandemic was kind of good for us because everywhere was was closed, there was nothing going on. So there was no outside distractions. And me and Tom McKenna, we were in some network and during the lockdown. He bought a gym, put in his garage. We were trained every day. We were, we were like two bulls. And then we went down to Dublin. We were trained there. And we were just got into great shape. So it was good for us to live the life, the boxing life. And then when the fights came, both of us were ready to go. Like, so the pandemic um, was actually a, a blessing in disguise. For boxers, boxers at the championship level, they get up and comers. You know, they were, it was bad for him because they weren't getting any fights. But if you were up at the championship level, it was good for you because you were going to get opportunities. Definitely was. It was good to, good to see, obviously, the positive impact. It's sort of, you know, because it's so easy nowadays where you can go, I can know COVID, this, that, the other, and put the blame on, on other things. Whereas it's going, it actually helped me, you know, look at the positive side of things that probably, you know, where you lost out financially in fights, you obviously were able to do other things and, and help prepare for fights, you know, which is mm. which is the best thing. Obviously, I wanted to keep it short and sweet. Um, just wanted to obviously finally mention obviously Northern Property, your your long term sponsor. Um, have obviously erected um, which they have done for the last few year fights, but they've obviously erected a big sign for your fight. I think obviously is it revenge? I think they have all over the poster. The revenge is sweet. And they've renamed the street Tommy's Way. That's it. <laughs> That's my street now. It's your street. And it's just down around the corner from where Mick Collin obviously grew up as well. So it's now been known as Tommy McCarthy Street. Um, but obviously it's great when you have sponsors like Northern Property there that are that are advertising their sort of fight. I know Eddie had shared it and things like that on Instagram. So I'm sure they obviously really appreciate obviously what Northern Property is doing for you. Yeah, well, you know, Northern Property. Dagnan and Tony, the two brothers, they sponsored have sponsored me more or less since a turn professional. It's been for years from the very, very start. They've stuck by me in the times when, you know, I've I've had two years of, you know, inactivity when nothing was happening. They've never gave up and they've always supported me. And, you know, they've, they've stuck by me right through and, and it's came good in the end. And uh, the last couple of years, I've been operating at a good level, won a couple of titles. So, 
you know, it's great that they were able to, that their faith in me has paid off. And now to put the billboards up and all and to show how proud they are of the work, because they've, they've been there from the start, like I said. So they, um, I said, Watson, you're friggin'. I don't know, like if, 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 you, if, well. if you, if you, yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Like, the wee nephews finally came good. Or I was going to say, like, if you, if you bought a, and you invested in a racehorse and it was shit for years and then now all of a sudden it's fucking gone brilliant. You go, that's my hands. You want everybody to know. Like, Tyrone's grey, Greyhound in the, in the film. Wasn't that bad? Yeah. And all of a sudden that became good. You know what I mean? They, like, they, they got behind me in Tyrone from the start, like, so... You know, I can't thank them enough. Definitely, as an say, support. Obviously, this the them obviously being behind you has obviously helped have a big influence in your career. And it's pretty much something that always, you know, I'm always appreciative. Obviously, when people want to thank your sponsors and things like that, because in mm-hmm. the day without the sponsorship, you wouldn't be involved in getting the level you are in the sport. So it's it's crucial that obviously yeah. at any level that sponsors get behind the boxers. It definitely, you know, because. To operate at the level, at the world level, um, you need to be full time, and it won't be possible without, you know, um, Declan and Tony from Northern Property and Peak Physique, and then, uh, Addy from EJC. EJC has come on board, and they've helped me massively. They, like, it's unbelievable. I can't thank them. I can't thank Addy enough and EJC, and then my friend Brandy Boyd, and he got our core on board for me and um brandon you know he's a friend and a sponsor so it's unreal and then for this fight i've got um graham hannah that came on board to help as well with afs statistics so it's just been it's been so so brilliant and then ken mulholland he's a solicitor from here from west belfast but he's um operating now out of dundalk mulholland law mm-hmm. And I, I bumped into him a few years ago in the Davenies, and he says, look, I'm, I'm operating, um, I've got my own practice now. If you ever need help, just give me a shot. And I put a thing on LinkedIn saying I'm, I'm looking for sponsors, and he got in contact straight away and says, come in. So uh, that's the other who's back with me and who's behind me at the minute, and I thank, I can't thank them enough. Like I said, brilliant, brilliant guys. Definitely isn't. And sort of finally just obviously... I know you're not really much for predictions, but but how how obviously do you see the fight going next week? Do you see it as a points victory or is there obviously a potential there of stopping Chris? Yeah, definitely. Potential for stoppage. You know, I had him troubled the last time, so I know I can do it. And if I smell blood this time, we're going for it. Definitely, yes. Obviously, for anybody that doesn't know, obviously Tommy's coming an event. Um Connor Benz card in Manchester in the zone next Saturday night. Um, be sure to tune in and check it out. Um, Tommy, obviously, thanks once again for, for joining us for a chat. Um, and obviously, we can't wait to, until you become European champion again next week. Yep, you probably do. All right, cheers, Tommy. Take care. All right, good Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.